call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda, unless there's any amendments to it. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So the uh, first, we get two appointments tonight. The first one is Brent. Um, he, I believe he's online, so yep. um, he's going to talk to us see? about rootstock racing. Can you guys see him online? Mm -hmm. Can yes. You oh, there you go. I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for having me. Um, I apologize again for a few weeks back. Um, I imagine Therese passed it along. I had some issues pop up with my kids, uh, had several of them back to school. And so I, I just apologize again for missing that, that meeting. Um, thank you for having me in tonight. And I think I'll start by just sharing a very brief, as brief as I can be, snapshot into who we are and what we're doing. And then how um, you know Bethel kind of fits into uh, those potential plans. So um, I represent and am the founder or co-founder along with my wife and racing partner um, Abby Perkis. Um, we are the founders of Rootstock Racing. Um, Rootstock is a grassroots 501c3 nonprofit, um, and we promote the sport of adventure racing, which. Most people honestly know nothing about, but it's a, it's a really special community of outdoor adventure athletes. Um, our events are essentially uh, like a wilderness-based triathlon. So teams of participants travel through a course um, on foot, mountain bike, and by paddling. And the entire time they are navigating using only map and compass uh, skills. So uh, for next year, our flagship event is actually a multi-day event. It's called the Endless Mountains Adventure Race. And uh, we've directed the first two events in Pennsylvania, uh, but we are looking to move the event around to different kind of corners of the kind of the Eastern seaboard area uh, and especially the Northeast. Um, I'm from New England originally, have some deep roots in Massachusetts and Vermont. And um, Vermont was a place we were really excited about taking a shot at directing this event. It's a seven day nonstop race. And when I say nonstop, I, I literally do mean nonstop. Um, you know, folks are working their own sleep strategy into the event and generally are traveling day and night uh, to achieve the goal of finishing the event. We are one of a, a dozen or so events in what's called the Adventure Racing World Series, which is what it sounds like. It's a, um, a um, you know, an affiliation really, a series of, premier multi-day expedition races that culminates every year in the world championship for our sport, which is being held in Canada next fall uh, for the 2025 championship. So Endless is one of two events in North America that serves as a qualifier. Um, it's a premier event. So we are drawing you know, the top competition from across the United States and Canada. Um, and we have a seven day, 450 mile expedition journey through the state of Vermont. Um, most of the event takes place uh, kind of in state lands, but we kind of connect state state and federal, I should say, state and federal land together using backcountry routes. Um, and in this case, what we're hoping to do is end one of our early biking stages in Bethel um, and have folks water levels allowing paddle down the White River to Hartford. Um, so this would be the third stage of our event. And so what we are, are looking for is a suitable area for what we call a transition area, where people will transition from one stage and discipline of the event to the next, in this case, from bike to what's called pack rafting. These are small inflatable boats that um, are great for uh, moving water um, and you know, white water. So in all of my field work and scouting, this is where I really kind of come back to you. Um, I had identified Bethel as kind of a ideal starting place for the paddle stage. Uh, seems like there's a decent chance that starting in Bethel will allow for us to run the river. Um, much higher, it felt like we'd be running the risk of it being too shallow, um, depending on water conditions. And I recognize that still might be a problem, um, you know, depending on water levels next summer in Bethel. But uh, I located and kind of scouted, um, is it pronounced Peavine or I don't know how you pronounce it? Peavine. Peavine. Yeah. Um, I had identified the little park there at Peavine as maybe kind of a perfect location for us to set up what we call a transition area. 
So I think I'll pause there. I'm happy to share a little bit more about what that would actually look like to see if you have any initial questions on the event as a whole or what we're doing. How many, did you say 150 participants is what you said in your email? I think that's what we're, yeah, I think that's what we're- once or staged? Great question. Uh, no. Um, you know, by the time they arrive here two stages into the race, approximately probably 36 to 48 hours into the event, teams will be pretty spread out. So I would expect they would be coming in over the course of 12 to 15 hours, give or take. You know, the navigation component of our event makes uh, makes it literally impossible to fully predict on like a traditional running or biking race where it's really just about miles and, and speed of travel. Um, so it would be a relatively light presence. You know, I think a lot of times they'll, I mean, there, there will literally be times where there's no action. Uh, and then you might have, you know, at the most, I would think half a dozen or so teams, teams are, are two to four people. So, you know, we might have, you know, 15, 20 folks kind of on site transitioning actively into the pack raft at any given time. And you asked if there was electricity, right? I did, but you know, the we are we are accustomed to working in places that are extremely remote, you know, think like an old abandoned quarry in the middle of a state forest where there's nothing. Um, so it's not uh, at all a requirement. You know, the three things that whenever they're available, we we ask about is electric bathroom facilities, which I know I don't think there are any there, um, or running water. Teams are expected to treat their own water as well. Um, and there's mm -hmm. obviously, you know, groundwater in that area, plen you know, plentiful groundwater. So if there's an electrical outlet, what we use it for is really to honestly set up some Christmas lights for the nighttime portion of our transitions, nothing too invasive and to run um, uh, Starlink if there's no cell reception. So we can use our, our devices to use the satellite tracking. All of our teams carry satellite trackers through the, the event. So that's part of our safety management, but we can do that without reception or electric if we need to. There is electric, you could plug in down there. Okay. And, um, and you should have good cell service because there's a tower right above you at the town garage that has multiple um, companies on it. So you should be fine for there. that. Um, Great. Oh, so you can't tell probably, but we had, we're um, at the fire station tonight and, and there's a gentleman here, um, okay. Captain, I think Paul, Captain Paul Feeney, he's Swiftwater Rescue. What's the, what's the way, what's it going to look like for him to come in and out of there, Paul, out of what's the water level usually like around that time of year? You guys run drills? It depends, then? It depends oh. on, it depends on the year. Sometimes you've got enough water to raft down to White River or sometimes you don't. Once you get down around south of Sharon, you're going to hit really shallow water before you even get into Hartford. So, right. Uh, it's yeah. going to be a hit or miss. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And our, we, you know, our contingency will be to just keep them on bikes if need be. You know, when I, I scouted it this summer, kind of in the same time window, a little bit later, technically, uh, a little bit later than um, they'll be paddling. And I was able to comfortably run all the way, but I, I absolutely know that that's not a guarantee that it would be like that next <clears throat> summer. So yeah. Just so you have a contingency plan, just in case we don't have any water for you. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. The contingency will be a long bike uh, turns into a much longer bike. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Those are my questions and my answers for you regarding the questions you'd asked in your email. But... And, and I think the only comments <clears throat> that I've just made, I mean, I think it's a good opportunity for Bethel. I mean, because whenever people come in, do an event that draws people in to want to buy something or need gas or, you know, um, pizza if the place is open or something like that. <laughs> um, but um I guess the biggest concerns I have at that, you know, park is just, um, you know, it's a carry in, carry out with yep. when it comes to trash. Um, you know, so when you're starting to talk about big groups of people, like how would the trash be taken care of? And then I think you definitely, you had mentioned in there, but I would say that you probably definitely would want a portlet on site. Yeah. Uh, just to keep things clean. Yeah. And other than that, I mean, it's the park's in a pretty good location where even if, you know, there is a small parking lot there and yep. there's also parking down the road. Like you could park on the side of the road. There's yeah. a little gravel pit there where there's a shooting range, but there's, 
there's a fair amount of parking there, I think. So it's it's probably a pretty good location for it. Yeah, the yeah. tricky is going to be what you saw coming under the trestle <laughs> is people coming in. There's a mirror there and you really have to watch it. But like I told you, that's state highway right there. So you'll have to deal with the state of Vermont and your whatever permits they require you to get. So, um, you know, that's the only real safety issue in my eyes is coming off from 107 under there. And I would just think that town would ask for some type of copy of insurance yeah. or, yep. or something like that. Um, but yeah, we, we, we carry a multi-million dollar insurance policy <clears throat> that we always anticipate adding folks to, um, you know, especially mm -hmm. places that are more integral to the course like this. So that would be no problem. Um, your trash question is great. You know, we have a leave no trace ethos ourselves as an event that is largely wilderness based and, you know, passing through local communities. So, you know, racers are really expected to take care of uh, their own um, their own waste um, in a transition area. Just to give you a little more perspective on that part of our rule system is such where if teams leave the transition and depart onto the pack rafting stage without cleaning up their work area they actually are penalized for that um, in terms of their time and their their ranking. So um, teams are generally really good about it. And then we are really good at, you know, sweeping through afterwards and doing multiple sweeps when we are done and everyone's through and we're cleaning up to make sure that we're leaving things as we found it, if not better. So yeah, we would expect to, to have, you know, carry and carry out ourselves. Anybody else on the board have any questions or comments or concerns or? No, I looked at your website. It looks like a pretty interesting event. So I look forward to being there. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, like I said at the beginning, it's it's a really special group of people. Um, you know, it's a really amazing community. And one of the, the really, really wonderful things about this, I mean, all of our events, but this event in particular is unlike a lot of sports where you literally have elite athletes uh, kind of doing everything they can to stay out of the way. Uh, in our sport, the elite athletes are often right alongside rookies and beginners um, and helping them along the way. Um, it's not like your kind of traditional running or triathlon event where people are are pretty geared up. And, um, you know, these guys are focused, they're competitive, but they're also community first. So it's a, a pretty supportive, wonderful group of folks to to work with. So. Well, I just think uh, I just need a motion to approve the... <clears throat> The oh, use of the Peavine Park and Boulevard area for the June 22nd, 23rd time frame for rootstock racing. Second. Was that Jordan? Yep. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, all right, there you go. Well, I if appreciate that. More questions, Brent, just email me. and. Um, that sounds, yeah. That sounds great. One more thing I want to actually throw out there, just since I didn't bring it up and no one asked, but um, I want to be transparent about it and we can work around it. But um, as a transition area kind of before a paddling stage and also a little later into the race, you know, I do foresee team, some teams coming through and wanting to sleep for a few hours and wondering if there's any problem with teams like, I mean, they're happy to just lie down in the grass and sleep, but some of them may also want to pop a, a personal tent wondering if that's the kind of thing where that would be okay or if that's something we should talk further about. I think you'd be all right. As it is, the select board's motion will waive the ordinance because we have an ordinance about obviously no overnights, no camping, right. that sort of thing. So I think you'll be fine. It's not like you're going to be killing the grass because you're there for 10 days. I think you'll be yeah. all right. Okay. And and we're talking a couple hours. You know, These yeah. guys will throw up their tent for two, three hours and then they'll get up and move on. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Sounds wonderful. Um, I will email you a follow-up, Therese, and I appreciate your time and all of your support. And thanks for having me in tonight. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Okay. Good luck with everything else. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Cecil, you you wait for anybody? You want to go five minutes early? <laughs> <laughs> so they do have the maps. Two maps. So I'll tell you what I told them. This is what I got from well, this is what I got from Richard. So you can say. Um, so that we're gonna add all right, 
Given Richard one. Where's his note? He told me how many miles he was going to add. Yeah, so he said he was going to add 0. 0.7 miles to Dart, 0. 0.67 miles to Whittier to here, 0. 0.22 miles up Whitcomb Hill, and then 1.69 miles back up Whittier. Yep. Sound? You're okay? Yep. There you go. And I gave him a big uh, state highway map so that we could finally get all this on one map. You know, you are on Whittier some now, right? What's that? You're on Whittier some what now? Yeah, I'm on the lower end. So you come up and go up. Tell the name of the road by Tom Strutt. No. No, I don't know what that road is. Dix Road. What is it? Dix. Is yeah, that in so. South? No. Dix or Bex? Dix. Stockbridge? And no, halfway up Whittier on the left, right? You're talking yeah. About. You're not talking about... Um, it's just Wickham, off. Wickham Hill? No, no. No, it's one lane no, I think it's a private. Oh, okay. Off yeah, the Lewisville Road. Okay. It's <laughs> a like, end. Okay. Yeah. I was like, good um, Lord, don't tell me it's a Hopefully, we don't file that private card. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> okay. No, there's someone has a sign up. I, I know where Brian is really talking about. So, yeah. So, that's your. That was where his request. And uh, so, it sounds like it jives with yours. And, and like I said, he's going to make one. Big map so that we have all the. Um, yeah, he's working on it, but yeah. he wants to wait till next spring so we can yeah. put everything on. Yep, that's what he said. That's fine. I gave yep. him the 2024 highway, highway maps because we get multiple copies. Yep. So, and I put this one in the packet. Now, are you thinking that this is going to be a, a long term kind of permanent thing, or is this going to be temporarily well, until you we can hope it's work some term. things out? We hope it's. Okay. That's our plan. It does sound like, from what Richard said, you're trying to make some more loops so that when people come for riding, they're kind right. of connected through different... Right. Stuff. Yeah. And the more trails you have, the more people come. Right. Yeah, when I was heading out of Bethel yesterday morning, I saw probably five trucks with at least one, if not two, four-wheelers yeah. on each one, razors, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. And also, thank you. I heard that Richard said you're letting people park at your place if yes. you need to because some yeah. other trailhead was yeah. shut down. So. Yeah. You charge them by the hour? Or does no, it's by the person. <laughs> did, did they have to buy furniture? He's like the guy at the beach there, 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah. You park here all day. So I should have charged $5. That's right. That's did, right. They, did they have to buy furniture before they leave? Did they have to buy furniture before they leave? That's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. They got least, trailers. At least one piece. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. There you go. Good. Sounds like a plan. All right. Does anybody on the board have any comments or concerns with the updates to the. Trail system? No. Nope. Okay, just put a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, there you go, Cecil. You know, Thank so. You. Keep Cecil, it under 100. If you, you obviously are more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, but if you don't want to, there's some firefighters out here who are willing to give a tour if you haven't been in the station or. I've never been in here. Yeah, okay. Right now. Yeah, there you go. So there's some people here that will give you a tour if you no, want, or you can wait till after, whatever. But um, in case you, they're going to show show you around if you want. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Move on to public comment. So now is the time. If anybody has anything that's not on the agenda, we'll go in person first. And Gene has got his hand raised. And that works for me. I want to say thank you uh, for the inconvenience you're experiencing of being here instead of at the town hall. And say thank you on behalf of Window Dresser. We've had a very successful build again this year. Uh, we're just about completely wrapped up, which is ahead of schedule. And so that's good. We have 140 inserts. Each one of them is going to make somebody a little more comfortable and cut down on their fuel use That's great. over the winter. So uh, it's a volunteer effort and uh, probably about 50 volunteers that have uh, contributed time, energy, uh, passion, food. Uh, and so uh, it's just a great event and uh, the town of Bethel and our town hall is 
frankly, oh, one of the best sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the best sites for doing this kind of thing okay. because of the high ceilings and and plenty of room. Uh, it just it works out really, really, really well. So I'm here public comment to say thank you on behalf of window dressers and all of the people whose lives we will make a little bit better. And thank you for speaking with Owen, Equity and Inclusion. Since you were wrapping up, he was going to let So thank you for that. I don't know. Someone I thought had reached out to let him know you were going to be busy, but he said he stopped by. So thank you for yes. letting him know. That's perfect. Thank you. And about how many people do you think will take it or will take advantage of the window dresser? You know, is this in Bethel? Is it, you know? So there's 140 inserts. Is it's that 140 family? inserts. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 or 20, 20 or so of fair households, mm -hmm. and it's a three-town collaborative effort. Uh, Randolph, Bethel, and <coughs> Royalton, or Royal Randolph, Bethel, and Rochester. <coughs> but we reach out as far as Brainerd or Barnard and as far Brainerd, Barnard, uh, Royalton. Oh, Braintree? Or Braintree, yeah. There you go, yeah, all right. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, yeah. So it, nice. it, it's, a, it's a pretty wide area. Do you take, you have to take orders? I mean, you can fit in yes. a window, so you, yeah, you can't make a size. No, no, no. You gotta know what you're doing. Yeah. Every window is custom made. Right. Okay. And that means that uh, during the summer, we people placed an order or said they're interested, and we went and we literally measured the windows that they wanted to do. If, frankly, if they said we can't afford it, they get it for free. If they uh, could afford it, it's a very reasonable cost because all the labor is is donated. Okay, define reasonable so if I could tell somebody. You're only paying for materials. Oh. I mean, I, it, so it's, oh, it's, it's a small bit, strips of lumber. It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a pine, pine wood frame uh, with uh, two sheets of uh, plastic or film on on each on each side so it's a double layer of insulation and a, yeah 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 uh, and then there's a, a all the way around it there's weather stripping so that it tightens up these old windows in but we don't have any old houses, right? Oh, right, in, yeah, in, no, all brand new in, here. In our area. Right, right. So, uh, it's, right. so that's how it, it works. And it's, it's an amazing, amazing program. Uh, the, so if you wanted to add these windows to your home, they, you would either go online or you'd Contact yeah, one I guess of us. I probably am not going to, but I might know someone who would. Yeah, but that's like 15 bucks a window, if not less. Mm -hmm. Probably not less than that. Yeah. yeah. For materials. You know, once you start yeah, buying probably. materials in a massive amount. I mean, yeah. 10 to 15 bucks a window. And so, um, it's for regular. It's a. Uh, it's a. I mean, I. I could go online and. You can go online and, and it'll give you all kinds of information. Okay. Okay. Under windowdressers.com? Windowdressers.com. Okay. And it's one word. And, it's uh, an organization out of Maine. It started in Maine. It is now in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And uh, so it's been a... Yeah, somebody, will, somebody will need a little nudging to, to actually take advantage of that. And, and it's like and I told you the other day, right, down at the park. Right. And people might take advantage of that because it's there if they knew that. Anything that the town can do to help promote both 
the, the use of this, but also volunteers for this would be really, really, really helpful. Yeah, if you're gonna do it again, I mean, Kelly can put something on Facebook and Front Porch Forum and our website, certainly. Yeah, you know, this is on Front Porch Forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she could do, you know, certainly. So, that. we could put something down at the food shelf as well. Mm -hmm. And and the it ranges from somebody to go into your home and measure your windows to uh, somebody to, uh, Sweep up. <laughs> so say so you're, you're sawing lumber up there, right? We, yeah, yeah the, yeah. the lumber sawing amounts to a, it's a little. Oh yeah, I know, there's still fine dust. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, we will leave the premises in as good as or better. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but it's just thank you. It's a great program. Uh, and volunteers from somebody to sit at a table and sign people in and somebody to, you know, handle yeah. a drill and assemble frames or whatever, you know, there's a bunch of different tasks and you can always find something for somebody to do. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Do we have anybody else in person before we go remotely? Um, oh, and, you know, you all snap. Oh, talk about the dog. Um, anybody oh, online? I, one thing. Uh, oh, I see you advertising for help. Is that for a fourth guy or is there somebody? <laughs> no, actually, I was going to get to that. Um, Todd Ashley is um, moving. moving. Yeah, yep, he's, or, no, he's happy working here, but he's going to be living in Middlebury. The commute's just too far. To commute. Tad, too far? Had and then to I see you've got a temporary for the winter. That's all. Well, no, that's you. No, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> so come on. Also, yeah, you come enjoy this, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so AJ and Morgan, beyond Paul comes as our seasonal, and then I put out two ads. You know that seasonal or full time. So, so okay. we can kind of. I'm trying to hedge my bets here. So worst case scenario, we just take a seasonal. They don't have to have a CDL because all the CDL routes are covered because Paul, Morgan, and AJ have CDLs. Um, but if we found, you know, a person for another fit, then we would take them instead of a seasonal. So right now we're, we're hoping for, you know, some good applicants and uh, see. Otherwise, um, <laughs> someone's gonna teach me how to fly. <laughs> so, uh, that's all right. Well, uh, so anyways, yeah. So if you hear somebody looking, they don't have to have a CDL. For the seasonal. There you go. Any anybody online that has any comments? Hi there. Um, yes, I do. Uh, this is Melissa Davis of Dark Hill, um, and I just wanted to uh, first say that we greatly appreciate your efforts on all of the road maintenance that you've put in, and the town crew has put in this summer on Dark Hill. Um, and we certainly understand that the town crew couldn't possibly grade the road as often as it is needed. Um, but I guess my ask tonight would be is, is it possible to maybe install a road sign on the Camp Brook end of Dart Hill, advising vehicles to possibly put their vehicle in four wheel drive? Um, the washboard seemed to seem to return just days after the crew is up there grading. And um, while the material doesn't certainly pack in as well as some other material could, the efforts are appreciated. And I know we have what we have to work with, um, but I'm not gonna ask for a speed limit signs. So I don't think that's gonna be very effective, but maybe advising all of the people in their uh, four wheel drive pickups that are in two wheel drive when they're smoking up the hill, maybe that could save us a little bit. Um, so again, just thank you so much for your efforts and the town crew as well. Um, but maybe a road sign would go a little bit further. That's not a bad idea, Melissa. Um, the road foreman's on vacation this week. He'll be back next week. I can ask him. But I did see the schedule that he left the road, the other guys that are covering this week while he's out and grading dart is on there. And um, okay. it is an issue that AJ and I have talked about before. Um, so, but I will definitely talk to him about the signage and you're right. Speed limit sign isn't going to do you any favors, but you're right. Yeah. If they put it in four wheel drive and go up the hill instead, it, it, 
we have the same spot in another place in town. They do the same thing. But I'll definitely talk to him next week when he gets back, and, and the guys will be out this week grading. Yeah, we appreciate that. I, I know it's only going to go so far, but yeah. Um, but no, something it's, might be better than, than nothing. Yeah, let me. It doesn't last long, and AJ knows. <laughs> yeah, he, he's yes, absolutely. So yeah, I'll touch base with him next week when he comes back. Super. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Anybody else? Elvie's got his. Oh, Elvie's got his hand up. Hi, um, I just wanted to give a reminder about the uh, the events going on next week for the uh, community conversations on crime and safety, um, and just kind of uh, urge or reinvite the select board members to kind of come to that. Um, and just kind of a reminder of the dates and stuff that. Um, one second, sorry. Uh, downtown and North Main's Monday at five thirty um, at the Parish House, um, and then the addresses. I guess I guess you probably should see the poster, which you guys kind of have at the select board. You guys saw this at the last meeting and if you need a poster you could reach out to me um but yeah yeah we updated i think pam was going to update something on facebook and then i went in and did postings created events for each one on front porch forum so hopefully they'll keep popping up I'll yeah see. we appreciated that especially because i know there was staff illness and stuff that made that a little bit tricky but we definitely appreciate yeah. that you've been advertising it yeah, Pam did one big post, I think, for Facebook, but um, yeah. that was, yeah, but the election is kind of the best we can do, and I don't do Facebook, so I couldn't help you there. But, um, but yeah, so when the poster's on the website and whatnot, so hopefully you get a decent turnout. Yeah. Thanks, Alvi. Yep, thank you. All right, do we have anybody else? Okay, hearing none, we'll close public comment. Well, we got a couple of permits. Uh, Babe's Bar catering permit request for 1031 um, for an event at the White Church. So if anybody has any comments or concerns, just need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have something Wicked Canvas Company retail permit on 269 Main Street. It's like they followed the rule. We got the note from the, from the state. And um, so that's in here. Mm -hmm. And um, again, it's not a lot you have to, that you can do there. Sorry, I think they can keep Chris. Not, um, so there's not a lot you can do there, but doesn't seem to be any issues. None that come to my attention. None of the cannabis board is something that way. Just need a motion to approve that one. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So I will say, um, I did get an email from the owner today saying that she um, has some uh, clientele that have mobility issues, so wants to have like a curbside pickup sign. I told her I didn't really think the select board would go for that as there's multiple people with um, multiple businesses that are not um accessible so i also said i didn't know because mutcd standards so i did reach out to marco smiller at the state he sent me a long email and he was going to do a little more research and also referred me to a couple people so um i just told her that you know i'm sure she could find some other creative ways but that i would certainly look into the legality of it before i asked the select board you know for a decision <laughs> so about it so so just so you know that's out there but i'm just working on it okay so all right. <clears throat> and Bethel Fire Department coin drop requests for May 24th and August 30th, 2025. So obviously they don't need to provide a proof of insurance because they're under ours. They have all the signs to set up um, that they own to traffic. They know um, they know that they can't have anyone under the age of 16 and that they can't conduct during rain or snowstorms. So, um, and of course, they all know they got their reflective vests. So I think they're okay. They do go. They know they're planning ahead. They are planning yeah. ahead. Yeah. Cool, right? yeah, yeah. Gary signed this on October eighth. He was yeah. like on it. Ahead for people. You come in in January, February. Now. They just want the first spots of the year. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gary's. 
Amos. Memorial Day and Columbus Day. So just need a motion to approve. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Need your signature right there, please. Did we have to sign that permit? Uh, the other stuff? Or no? No. Nope. Just uh, I have to give them. Anna the Smith Old Board wants copies of the minutes. I just tell Pam and she goes online gotcha. and does hers. Oh, we used to have to sign. You both, did. Yeah, you all had to sign. Before. Pretty soon we won't even be able to do anything. Not <laughs> perfunctory. <laughs> that way. point, once they just prove it up in Montpelier. <laughs> Send the paperwork out in their new post office. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, then we had a discussion in regards to potential changes in the employee health insurance. Yeah, but it's been a very confusing spreadsheet. Uh, but so basically, if we stay with our current plan, that the rate increase for the same plan is 24% for family, 23%. For a single. Is that approved or those estimated? Like, you no, know, these are approved. They're hot. These right here, this came. They're so the legislation approved over 20% increases? I guess so. Yeah, well, it's not the legislature. Oh, yeah. it's, the, it's the health, whatever board. Well, yeah. You know, you know I do. Yes, they did. So, what I was trying to do was be a little more creative. So, I looked at MVP gold, MVP silver, blue cross, blue shield silver to see mm -hmm. where our best deal was. My thought at this juncture is to move us from blue cross, blue shield, gold to MVP silver. So it would be about a 12% Reduct it would be 12% reduction MVP being silver and a 7% reduction for singles. Excuse me, 12% family, 7% for singles. However, however, here's the catch. In order to do that, I have to see, I want to know if the select board was willing to increase your share of the HRA. And currently, what we do is I'm gonna make say the deductible is two thousand dollars. Then the town pays a thousand. And the employee pays a thousand, and it's preloaded on the HRA, so the card. So they burn through the, we burn through the town's money first. So part of this savings, even though you'll still have a savings, I have calculated in that if we switch to MVP Silver, basically the rate drops because the HRA because the the uh, deductible climbs. So if the town's willing to pick up a larger 8,600 for a family, the employee picks up 3,000, the single picks, town picks up 4,300, the single picks up 1,500. So you still have a savings that I, because I put those numbers in here. The other thing is you could have additional savings because not everybody uses their health insurance. Right. So that preloaded HRA may not all be spent because somebody may not utilize it. But I did include it here as a- And that HRA is spend it or lose it, right? It is spend it or lose it. It is not their money. At the end of the year, it's, okay. it's gone. So we all know it's not the time to cut benefits. It's tough trying to find employees. And so this was my thought to MVP Silver gives the employees the same coverage. It just, the deductible is higher. So, so, so you had to look at that really carefully. Yes, this, this is what you get. I'll show you. And uh, I don't want to read it. I no, can, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm believe you. Dave. <laughs> so you get yeah. this is Blue Cross Blue Shields. And then you get, then we get Blue Cross Blue Shields because we're currently Blue Cross Blue Shields. And then you get MVPs. Why in the God's name they're not the same concern they offer? Some of them are identical plans. But no, so we could stay where we are, and um, and the rates, you know, it's gonna go up. But just to throw it out there, does Cigna offer the HRA? Currently, I don't. I'm only aware of us being able to get MVP and Blue Cross Blue Shield because we are a Vermont company. I know that we use 
Pike, for an example, they're not, a, I don't think you're going to come back. You get your insurance elsewhere, correct? Right. Because of that. So currently, these are the only ones that I have seen through the exchange or through the state is Blue Cross Blue Shield. But you think Cigna? Did you have a Cigna? But we, were you a bigger conglomerate owned by someone out of state? No, it was the Granite Group Insurance Trust. So it was an umbrella for all the granite companies yeah. in town. Right. Or in the area. So yeah, but all, that that uh, how all the rates worked out because we had three hundred and whatever people right on plus uh, that was union and then office staff because right. one year Blue Cross Blue Shield gave us a twenty percent rate in the end of May and then in October they raised us another fifteen percent yeah and we were third party administrators so the next year we get money back. So we had three months of premium holiday because mm -hmm. they had overcharged us so much. Yeah, and that's what, yeah, the state has a third party administrator, but I can see if we have signal, but it's never been brought to my attention that that's okay. our, but I'll double check. So this is kind of where we're at right now is, I don't want to switch health insurance companies again. We have been with MP, we were with Blue Cross and we went to MVP and then we're with Blue I've Cross. Changed, However, I've changed my Medigap every single year. Yeah. But I mean, yes. you know, I have, I, you know, it's my job. Yes. I do take advantage of the insurance. Mm -hmm. And I do know that we're going to have a couple people, myself included, are going to go from a family to a two person. Um, so a little bit of savings there. But I also don't know if we bring in someone at Town Highway. Currently, I'm paying for a single plan, but that could be a family. So, you know, you just, and we obviously do a payment in lieu of insurance for people that don't take insurance, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. I have one employee that does that. So, you know, but it's a nice uh, being able to, if someone has insurance, to be able to offer them an incentive to stay off our plan. Yeah, they do that in the grain industry. Yeah. Can you, you need that here? Yeah. Can you, can you send me the MVP sheet? Of course. Yeah. So I just don't know. I guess what I'm looking for is your opinion on send MVP sheet to Jordan. Um, I'm just, what's your opinion about upping the HRA? If we can do that, because in the past, we can only be able to split it evenly. So I have to talk to someone at MVP to find out if we can do that. If we can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna, we'll look at probably going, maybe still switching MVP, but the savings, um, I think is going to be obviously the savings is going to be less. I mean, the other thing you could look at too, and maybe we got to look at many different options here. Is you know what what employers do often too is if their insurance gets to a point you want to choose a less expensive option, or yeah. in this case, might have a higher deductible as you can make it up on the wage end of things. Right. Um, Yes. So, however, yeah, that, but that's a theory. I'm not always sure. We'd have we'd have to do some serious math because well, we've done that. I've done that in another town, not me. A prior administrator in another town did that. But then, so people got a raise on that. Then they're getting overtime on that. So I was I you know I never trying to sit down at the end of the year to figure the math. But you're right. Sometimes that we the, did that when we yeah. switched in the granite industry from yeah Blue Cross Blue Shield to Cigna. Everybody yeah. got a raise because they actually started having having to pay well, got, more of a deductible. I think you got yeah. another way to pay those people that money. Yeah, as a stipend or some flat rate number. Yeah, so and there is doesn't, a doesn't get affected by overtime. Right. Or all that. Yeah, or you could yeah. offer a yeah some kind of I mean, it's just it's something to think. But yeah, because MVP gold is still a slight savings. Um, uh, is still a savings of. Um, eight percent and seven percent so there's a little bit of savings if i compare mvp gold to blue cross blue shield gold because our blue cross blue shield gold for a family is going to be forty one thousand six hundred and mvp gold is going to be thirty eight thousand five hundred so but the, so basically so look at sorry i can look at that as a stipend like in lieu of and well i think we should look at it a couple yeah. ways one is what does it look like if we go from gold to gold mm -hmm. i mean i think we have to move to mvp it's just yeah and, move some and it's not like the end, yeah. i mean we've done this since i've been on the board this will be the yeah. third time now yeah, that we've yeah. changed you know so yeah, it's like it, your current yeah. currency once in a while you gotta go 
yeah. to the other person. And, I think I've changed three. And, yeah. Because uh, we had some years where they'd be like, oh, it's going to be 21% increase. And then uh, we'll go to MVP and they'll be like, oh, okay, it'll be 8%. So we'll yeah. you know, them for a couple of years. And yeah, so they, I, they I would look at, to get you back. I would look at that. And then maybe, you know, obviously you got to look into that, the HRA piece yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And then what those savings would be for each one yeah. of those. And then what would be another option? Like yeah. if you did raise rates or if you were able to do some sort of like stipend once a year to make up the difference or you know like yeah. how could we do that yeah it's... because some of them i'm not sure i guess the other question would be hra versus what's the other oh, crap. we used to have one ppo no if it's you have your hra which is health reimbursement hsa hsa thank HSA. you yeah. so i don't know because for a while there was a rule about some plans you couldn't have an HRA and an HSA, but maybe, but maybe that's the way. If we can do that, then maybe that's the idea. That's their, that would, that's their money. Yes, exactly. So then you make a one time, and you're right, and that money rolls. So maybe that is your way. So I guess we'll look at it I, a few ways, but I just want you to know there's going to be a change, and it's I'm at some, doing the best I can at to At some say. point, I don't know. I think the whole world has to wake up. To, I know. We cannot. We cannot fund the full cost of insurance. Yeah. I mean, it took us, I don't know how many years, we finally got the teachers to pay 20% mm -hmm. on the premium. Yeah. Yep. That's I what think, I would think. But eventually what you're going to have to do is you can't, pen, in my opinion, you cannot penalize your existing employees. But what you could do, which you have done in a past uh, personnel policy, is to say employees hired as a mm -hmm. blank you'll pay for a single plan or whatever. And then, you know, but it's tough because there's such a shortage in workers. Yeah, but that's why that, I take everybody. Yeah. It's going to be a state. Yeah. It. Well, a state. I'll give you an example. I was talking to Richard and I, we had a meeting with Hebert. We were talking to them. Young person came over, had an interview with Hebert, wanted 45 bucks an hour. <laughs> He's obviously can't swing that, makes him a, what he feels is a reasonable offer. Young man goes to supposedly Casella Construction. They pay him, give him what he wants. I, I'm like, I'll never get anyone to work again. I can't at the town. So just so you know, I mean, this is, so, I don't know so, what we're coming. Into. And I'm not, I don't know this person. Yeah. But I've talked to young people. They don't give two shits about sure. I know. They want X dollars. They want money in their pocket. Yeah. Which so we they can, may have given them $45 an hour, but. No, which is what we can do with that additional money, the payment in lieu of, we can do that for someone and say, okay, if you're not taking the insurance, we can do this, which is more salary. But, you know, it's a trick because then one day they decide they want benefits and you're going to say, oh yeah, remember that $10,000 incentive we gave you? That's mine now, you know? So it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyways, we'll see. But anyways, the other way is we're going to make a change. My guess is, yes, we're going MVP. We've been there before. Excellent yeah. service. And uh, but basically, I'm just trying to chase the savings. So if you're willing for me to look into you doing more HRA <clears throat> or a combo HRA, just say I'll do that. Yeah. And I'll yeah. ask about savings. Yeah, I got to do something. <clears throat> yep. And it's it's, it's hard. I would say yeah, it's like, very hard to make something inequitable. All right. Thank you. Sorry. I know when I saw the numbers, I was like, oh, oh boy. I don't know who's proving them at the state level. But what we got to do is, I mean, crazy. I hate to say, I mean, is people in Montpelier need to realize that we're at the end of the leash here. Like, we can't afford anything. No. And I mean, I just heard there's, you know, three, there, there's four bills right now that they're fighting over in there, of which three of the four are going to, significantly increase heating oil, like costs and it's like i know we want to better the planet but we also got to be able to afford to live like yeah. i mean yeah. the planet, accordingly. you know it's like it yes. no but it's just you know yes. it, and again it's it, it shouldn't matter who's in there but i mean these things like we, they're not sustainable and mm -hmm. and the legislation doesn't do anything about it like every year they just plug the hole and but one more year, you know, yeah, they don't, like they've been doing it forever. Really like they don't even talk about it. They may slow the flow down, but they don't plug the hole. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's ways to do this thing. Like, no. It's just over and over. Frustrating at the town level because we don't really have a whole lot of power. It's yeah. kind of like, well, do you want employees? And if so, this is what's going to cost you, you know? Yeah. Now, I will say that, you know, being on the private end of things is 
it, it almost sugars that way. Like typically town employees get paid less, but their benefits are better. Mm -hmm. The private end of things, you get paid more, but have to chip into a little bit more of your benefits. So it's so kind of one of those things, like I wouldn't say that, you know, I mean. And so you use total compensation as a way to compare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the only way you can compare, total compensation. That's what you did at the end of everybody's evaluations. I wrote down, this was your base salary. This was your overtime. This was yeah. your insurance. This is your, mm -hmm. your, how much we put in for research. This is that. So when you leave, if you think you're going somewhere, this is what you, this is your whole compensation yeah. package. So maybe you're not buying bread with all of it, but think long term. So, but I mean, just looking through the, I mean, the, mm -hmm. the town still is getting a bargain for their labor. In, yeah. in in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if the private market spends a lot more than what yeah. the town's spending, but it's passed on to more consumers. Like the town is, you know, you don't have, you know, your tax base doesn't really grow over here. Yeah. So so that's the challenge is, is, is that is how do you do that? It is a challenge. So just need volunteer plow truck drivers, right? That's right. Brian's number one. <laughs> <the list>. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, I mean, anytime, and even if we don't do anything, the, every year we should be throwing things against the wall, see if yeah. they, what they look like. Like it, we yeah. wouldn't be doing anybody's service if, if we didn't do that. No. no um, how does it look? Does it look like we should move? And if yeah. so, what are our options? And yeah. yeah. Do the best that we can with these. So. Before we have to ask for money. So right. um anything further on health insurance? Mm -hmm. So we Go will uh, we will talk uh, about that as the next uh, meeting yep. then. Um uh, town manager's report. So I wanted to say thank you to Gary and uh, the fire department for housing us here today. It was last time we tried this at my office and we were overrun with people and um, no place so tight standing room only so i appreciate this this room is smaller than the town office but just the way it's laid out town office you can't fit more than like six people in the company they all like yeah. chairs so it just doesn't um, work so i had to issue my first ever uh no trespass order to a bethel resident so um mm. he will no longer be able to use the shooting range mm. um so he admitted to being over my Cacris pit and shooting at the camper. And, you know, if I could make these, make them retake hunter safety, I would, but I can't. So the word no trespass is, is uh, there. And they came and saw me. We had a chat about it and while we'll see how it goes. But um, for right now, no, no go. Um, so progress is being made on Sand Hill. I did give them permission to work on Saturdays if necessary, because they need to meet their paving deadline. We need, they need to have it ready to pave by the end of October. So um, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that, but if it does, they work eight to 3.30 and it's, and I just, I have to have it paved at a certain point. And so um, I did tell Matt, he said maybe one or two Saturdays, they'll work in the day, so we'll see. There's not many Saturdays left. I know. <laughs> and I there's know. snow in the forecast. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So there's some care. snow in the forecast. So, times that we're at 10. <laughs> so, not, not <laughs> but it is going to be 60 next week. Yeah. So, maybe. That's yeah, right. So, By the end so, of this week, it's going to be cold. Yeah. Right. So, Sugar Hill, um, Culbert on Sugar Hill Road. Um, Chris Bump is our V Trans uh, guru for District 4. And uh, he met with myself and Dexter Favor from New England Consulting. So he's getting plans together, trying to get, um, I've shipped it off to FEMA to have um, folks look at it there so that hopefully um, we can go out to bid, but we can't award it without input from, from FEMA. So I'm hoping that they'll um, get that ready so that we can go out to work and out to bid. It will be a spring job, you know, most likely May, um, but we're slated, but that's moving forward. How are we doing on our FEMA payments? I mean, I, I get, I read, I listen to the news and it's like there's people, places out there that are two years, three years out. Yeah. And yeah, you've got money, but they don't have any money. Yeah. They, we are doing well because all of our projects were obligated. So we, I was lucky to get everything obligated at this point. So just the we, December stuff. No, no, December. Oh, you got the obligated. December stuff. Yeah, made it in under the wire. Yeah. So we will, so, you know, you submit and we get reimbursed. You know, it takes Eventually. a minute. Well, but, you know, we've actually received several payments from July already. I think I might be fully reimbursed from July. Of course, Pinello, we're, you know, 
still waiting. FEMA is just dropped off the face of the earth. We need them to comment on Pinello so we can build that, you know, $1.2 million bridge to one house. Oh, and, uh, it's going to be all washed away. Anyway. Yeah. You know what? Uh -uh. Their side is going to be missing. And I'm going to wait when I drive by because my bridge is still going to be there, Brian. And they're going to be cut off. And I'm going to say, hey, you should have fixed that big thing that we keep sending. Well, the bridge about. to nowhere then. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But <laughs> we've got to build it. I can't tell you how many extensions we've got about that. So, yeah, like I said to Brian, that Todd is gone. Um, also, we the chickens, the chickens, the chickens on Church Street. Yes. Um, so I received a couple, very funny, anonymous contacts from the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So I called Jason Snelling, um, and he said they aren't Jason's chickens, they're Sonny's chickens. <laughs> but he said when Sonny goes in June, the chickens are going to. So I don't know if Sonny's taking the chickens or what. But the Sonny is going to I guess. Going into the military. Going into the military. Oh, so I think the chickens will. So I don't know what's happening. The I'm not sure what's chicken happening. Chicken going to the supper <laughs> table. <laughs> But um, so the Catholic Church uh, wanted to remain anonymous, but I had a picture of the damage that supposedly well, the chickens had done to the lawn. So I called Jason on Friday. He was very good about it. And I just said, look, they, the state law is that the town of Bethel can fine him $10. But the rest of the state law is if he is taken to court as a civil matter, he will lose because the statute is clear. So we had a good conversation about it. I asked him if he could keep him home. He asked me if I had any ideas how. I said, do you have a coop? And he said, yes, leave him out. And uh, so we talked about that. I also reminded him we're going to have a big sidewalk walk project going in the spring. So, you know, not sure how the chickens are going to fare. But he, I said, you know, if you could reach out to the Catholic Church and maybe make amends. But the Catholic yeah. Church could have a chicken pie supper. There you go. Yeah. They just did it. They just did. Yeah. So <laughs> there was a was chicken, chicken in the road. Missing, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was in the road. Yeah. Like, That's why the chickens went over and did what they did. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what I said to Jason was, I said, look, if they're chewing up the Lord's lawn, I don't know what they're doing to your neighbors. But <laughs> if you could just keep an eye and let me know if you see the chickens out and about. He did yeah, I talked to somebody at the church when I was there. Yeah. So, anyway, so if the chickens are running amok, you know, <laughs> it's going to cause. I mean, when I lived right on Church. Church Street, I could hear this. Yep. And we talked about that. So, who would be responsible, the owner, if there's like a three car pileup? Because well, the, he's, they're trying to avoid the chickens. Yeah, it'd be just like if you had a dog that ran the road. Or, yeah, that would be, yeah. He's yeah the be so, responsible. there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, we'll run any wires like Tree said. It's a $5 fine. We'll if it's doing it, it's $10. Mm -hmm. If it's that's five there. or 10 for each chicken, then that's like 100 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> 100 bucks a whack. So, I every know. day. If it's, if it's livestock, you have a fence, they get out of the fence, you are not liable. If you don't have a fence, and you, as the owner, are liable. Huh. I know. But well, look yeah. what happened. You <laughs> are liable if it, if it's, it continue, continues and you don't maintain your fence. Correct. But that, like the sheep next door. Fence, yeah. it's oh, it's not mine. It's, it's, not it's not a 14-year-old kid. Well, as, as Mosher found out, even if you have a fence, it's yeah. your lawful. Where else they know they have chickens? Yeah. They're not, and they're cooped up. I mean, yeah. they're, not, they're not out. Well, yeah, so not he like was, the sheep, right? He was very nice about oh, it. That's and a different. So I haven't, I haven't seen Sunny. So if I see Sunny, I guess I'll tell him it's ten dollars a chicken. <laughs> but uh, anyways, he was very nice about it. I just explained the situation. I said, look, I, you know, a lot of people do this. I want to be the town is not the club to beat your neighbor with. Um, right. but, but I did want to know there was a statute. So if he did, if it did go to court, then he would lose. So, um, but he was, he was great about it, and um. So yeah. I just switched so to them. You're not my chickens, your mom's chickens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Same with the sheep. They're not my chickens. So, They're yeah. Asher. So that's all I have for telling me to report. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So. All right. And we yep. had um, meeting minutes from two meetings. We had the uh, September 23rd meeting, which was a full meeting. And then we had the 30th meeting, which was a special meeting. So. Yep. Any changes to any of those? If not, just a motion to approve. You look good to me. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. I just want to remind you that your next 
regular select board meeting is the 29th at 6 of the town hall. There's a special meeting at the 28th, um, but uh, but your regular select board meeting will be the Tuesday. I assume that at least three of you can move it. And what was your question about the EIC minutes, Dave? I'm not following. I didn't. Okay. It, it said the wording is probably just a matter of me not understanding the wording. Let me find it. Okay. No, it's bananas. Did you see uh, instead of banding? Alzi acknowledgement of when talking about people or places, the name of place and context of people who are mentioned, period, noted as not being in practice in select meetings, select board meetings. What are, what are we, I don't know what that means. Exactly. Well, it could be. He's online. It could be that because we are well-versed in the topics that we are discussing and you've read your packet, we have had this, this uh, constructive criticism before from Guy Best saying, sometimes when I'm listening to the meetings, you guys know what you're talking about, but I don't know as someone who just oh, tuned in. Okay. Is that what you meant, Albie? Yeah, that's exactly what I was kind of referring okay, to. Okay. And I mean, it's it's usually fine. Usually by the end of what you're talking about, I know where and what you're talking about. But <laughs> yeah, um, they definitely can be a little bit tricky just to know what's what's going on and where <laughs> where it's going on. Yes, yes. I apologize. It is. It's you know, we do it or at least I do it every day. So I know. So you're right. It's it's good feedback, Albie. So we'll try to be better. So I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Is that it, Dave? Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. I just want to make sure I was understanding what yep. that meant. And Guy Best sent me an email once about that, too, when I was like, yeah, I'm sure we do do that. And can I have Alvi reach back out to me? I've been, I've had a lot going on, but I'd like to meet up with you guys before um, the meeting on the 22nd, if you still want to. Yeah, yeah, we can, I can reach back out um, to try to get something scheduled. Okay. I'll look forward to that. Anything else? I did send the um the board members today a copy of the um uh, proposal of, of yours oh the contract um really really nothing's changed in it um but just if you guys wanted to read through it and most of it was just um yeah a couple things have grammar changed. <laughs> related things but not, yeah. nothing too major in grammar related yeah. change in roll up rollover um moving my cell phone stipend from 25 dollars a month to 35 dollars a month um the salary in the contract is my current salary so I'm not really looking for anything additional other than the 20 going from 25 to 35 for my cell phone and a different rollover for my um vacation. And also the one time it mentioned fiscal year, but it should have said calendar year in another place, Bethel wasn't capitalized. So it's pretty much the same contract. And my plan is to sign the is to sign the two year. Um so we'll just look through it and then I was thinking at the next meeting, the Tuesday meeting, we can either you know, prove it as as written, or if you guys have any comments or concerns, we can always go into executive session on this. Yeah, yeah. So my contract expires um, tomorrow, but there so is should be on strike out yeah. front. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> until the, until the next. But there's week. no black <laughs> Yeah. So there's a, a but there's a ninety day like clause if we're in negotiations. So I just don't. It, it says that so if you're reading it, there is a clause. So we're fine. And mm -hmm. I'm obviously not going anywhere. Some dang good and ready. That's right. Ain't no or you fire me one the two, whatever happens <laughs> first. <laughs> no, nobody's going to fire. Well, we'll see. see how the chicken thing goes. Yeah, so I was just going to say. <laughs> let's be the end. Oh, we could have a stampede at the next town meeting, because but, the next select board meeting because of that. No, yeah, the chickens. <laughs> we love chickens. It's amazing what small stuff can occur. Oh, and yeah. And like, yeah. Flowers in the cemetery. Yeah, exactly. Change so the name it. of the school. You want to get some people at the meeting. Nope. And a mascot. Yeah. No, no. Man. So we don't have anything else, but there's Ron is here. Um, Paul is here. Gary's here. I don't know who else is here, but certainly you should at least take a look at the new used oh. fire truck. So I think it says Bethel now, right? Not 
not Norwich. So, and our other one is on order. We have officially mailed the check. So, all right. All right. How long a build is a new one? It'd be at least a year. So that's pretty good though. For, yeah, for the yeah. stuff that's on, I haven't told you anything. Yeah. We're, we're hoping to have it right around December, January 2025. And it looks like a couple of people will go to North Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota, excuse me, to see during the build because they need to see how it's being laid out then before it gets back here to Massachusetts because by then it'll be too late. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so we ended up getting our insurance and then the state made us whole with through their state liability claims fund. So, um, so we were able to pay for the rest of that as well as um, the used one and certainly um, doesn't, does not by any means take away from any other issues that we have for apparatus needs or, um, but um, we will be hanging on to the used one and not selling that correctly, correct? Yeah, so that'll stay and, but we're still gonna need, you know, hose and parts and nozzles and a bunch of other stuff for the new uh, truck when that comes. So that wasn't something that was, um, we could get so so if you know if you want to leave us in your will brian uh the fire department is always yeah. looking forward to a request <laughs> i feel a couple of those hundred dollar bills into going, the yeah. uh, coin drop the, exactly. yeah they don't care the machine up here. yeah some more yeah, yeah there you go i'm in the coin drop first, first one may 24th next year that's right we'll there be you go. The pole in the road here. yeah exactly <laughs> so that's it we're good yeah yeah anything, anything else come before the board York, it's going to go to bed. Well, okay, it's need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you.